tucked away in the Mediterranean, Malta is where Europe's rich and famous go to relax. But beyond the sun, surf and sand is a darker side. One laid bare by the assassination of investigative journalist Daphne Galizia. On Monday, she was killed in a car bomb attack. Days after, her latest expose accused Prime Minister Joseph Muscat and his aides of accepting bribes to sell Maltese passports. The murder has sent shockwaves through Malta and the EU. President Juncker and the European Commission condemn this attack in the strongest terms possible. The right of a journalist to investigate ask uncomfortable questions and report effectively is at the heart of our values and needs to be guaranteed at all times. We trust now that justice will be brought even if this will not be enough to right this wrong. The Maltese Prime Minister was quick to condemn the crime and distance himself from it. WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange is offering a reward for anyone who can help catch the perpetrators. But Galizia's own work suggests Maltese criminals operate with a high level of impunity. Despite being an EU member state, the country has opted out of its public prosecutor office, which investigates and prosecutes tax fraud and money laundering. Although the country's officially given up its tax haven status, a recent leak showed as many as 70,000 shell companies registered here. And investigators are probing 2,000 companies in Germany they suspect of evading taxes worth $2 billion through subsidiaries in Malta. So far, no one has claimed responsibility for the attack on Galicia, but her son blames the state. We are a people at war against the state and organized crime, which have become indistinguishable. The government has called in the FBI to investigate the assassination, but there are still no signs of an inquiry into the accusations that may have led to Galicia's death. Mubin Nasser, TRT World. Now, TRT World editor at large, Craig Kopitas, joins me now live on the set. Great to have you here, Craig. Now, 24 hours ago, I would have thought of Malta as a relaxed Mediterranean island, but now the scene of, as, on, of an assassination of a colleague, a journalist, like myself, like you. What happened in 24 hours is just has done shockwaves around the world. Her son, I'm just going to quickly quote her son, called Malta a mafia state run by crooks. <laughs> Tell me, Craig, who runs Malta and who's putting their money into this island? Well, you would think it would be Casper Gutman and Joel Cairo from the Maltese Falcon, uh, the way this is sounding. But it's all uh, quite true. Look, uh, Malta is at the epicenter of this operation called uh, Citizenship for Investment, or uh, better known as Selling Sovereignty. Now, this is very much linked to tax havens. Malta makes money, a lot of money, off of establishing corporate fronts, and it makes a lot of money selling citizenships, hundreds of millions of dollars on both ends. Now, what happened here is the Panama Papers, which we investigated, was embroidered with the name Malta and Maltese companies. Um, and people believe, because the EU said, you can no longer be a tax haven and be a member of the EU, that Malta stood back. Well, they're wrong, because you must focus on a tax haven as if you were a citizen of a nation where those laws are not enforced. So you have a lot of people from Latin America, Asia, uh, the Stands, Africa, getting involved in some pretty dirty shenanigans on Malta, which are not extraditable or enforceable in their home countries. So basically a tax haven is in the eye of the beholder. Exactly. Now, let me just go back a bit. So you, would you say that Malta has really sold its soul by, by giving up its sovereignty? Well, to quote Dashiell Hammett from the Maltese Falcon, you know, he looked very pleasantly like a blonde Satan. This is how Malta has positioned itself, along with a lot of other tax havens around the world. We have no idea what our colleague was investigating there. We still have no idea who may have assassinated her. But we can be pretty darn sure that this involved the Panama Papers and, and uh, 
mal financial malfeasance which Malta and other countries are celebrating by trying to attract investment from dirty parts of the world. Yeah. Now, you worked on the investigation of the Panama Correct. Papers as, as a journalist. The fallout hasn't been as big as we expected. Why is this? Because the Panama Papers were a dump of data from a law firm in Panama. It had a country or it had a company, and it said there's this many companies, and these are the names. At that point, you had to do digging into each company and each country to find out who owned what and, and who owned who mm -hmm. exactly. And that is very painstaking, very expensive work, and a lot of it is still being carried out. Now, just let's talk about the EU. Where is the EU in all of this? Let me just recap some of the points our colleague Mobin made. Malta is obviously an EU member state. It opted out of the European Public Prosecution Office, mm -hmm. which fights financial crime. Two, it's no longer an official tax haven, but it has around 70,000 shell companies registered there. And also there's an investigation underway into 2,000 companies in Germany suspected of evading taxes in Malta. All this under the EU umbrella. How? Well, if it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's probably a duck, or in this case, a tax haven. Again, it goes back to this point. You take a, a country like even Luxembourg, which is a tax haven. As, as long as they are not accepting money and investment from countries within the EU or the United States or countries that actually enforce their, their tax and criminal laws domestically, you're in the clear in Malta. You're in the, you know, Malta, for instance, they'll charge over a million dollars if you want to buy citizenship. What happened is really bad for Maltese business because you can get that same deal in the Caribbean island of San Lucia for about two hundred or no, hundred thousand dollars. Get the same deal. So th what happened? This murder is very bad for the Maltese business, and uh, it's probably going to get worse, and it's going to continue until you can start enforcing this stuff in Africa, Asia, and the other areas, regions I mentioned. But are they going to care? Say, you know, would Azerbaijan care? Would African states care? Well, to go back to the Maltese Falcon, we didn't believe your story, Mrs. O'Shaughnessy, but we believed your $200. As long as you come up with the cash and you put it on the table and you're not coming from a country where they care, a tax haven is going to take your money Gladly. No impunity, no questions nothing. asked. Nothing. No problem. Now, talking about questions, what about the FBI investigation into this? What do you think of that? Well, that's kind of remarkable that the Maltese are calling in the FBI because it goes back to this question of territorial sovereignty of Malta. Does this mean that the European uh, uh, authorities, police authorities, don't have the sophistication to invest their own backyard? Why are they calling in the FBI? Well, they probably have more, more resources, and who knows? there actually may be a U.S. angle to this case because if they were dealing in U.S. dollars, guess what? These people could be prosecuted in the United States and put in jail. Craig, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you so much sure. for all that analysis.